Hi, hello and welcome back to F1 Challenge VB. My name is Mephisto and our epic journey through the history of Formula 1 continues today with the 6th round of the 1955 season, the British Grand Prix. It was held on the 16th of July, it had 26 entries, 25 of which took part in the race with a whopping 16 retirements. The race consisted of 90 laps completed in 3 hours, 7 minutes and 21 seconds. The lineup at the start of the race saw Sterling Moss on pole with Fangio in second, Bera Fred, Kling fourth, and Piero Taruffi in fifth. Sterling Moss drove his Mercedes to victory with Fangio finishing in second, just two tenths of a second behind. Karl Kling managed to snatch third, he was 1 minute 11.8 seconds down. Taruffi finished in fourth, he was 1 lap down. And Luigi Musso claimed the fifth spot, he was also 1 lap down. Moss also managed to post the fastest lap of the race, 0.4 second lap. And here we are in Great Britain at the start of this year's British Grand Prix, the little known Aintree circuit. It's been used in non-championship races before, but this is the track's first appearance in a championship race. And the lap starts off with a short rundown into turn 1, a fast right-hander. Careful as you exit because you don't want to hit the wall on the left there. Next is anchor crossing turn 2, a very tight right-hander. Easy on the throttle as you exit, the car likes to swap ends here. Next we have turn 3, cottage corner, an even tighter left-hander. Brake hard and be patient as you start to get back on the power. Turn 4 is next, a tight left-hander. Swoop in, clip the apex, keeping the car as tight as possible. Next is village corner, turn 5, a medium speed right-hander. Try to keep the car as tight as possible, feathering the throttle as necessary. We then come on to turn 6, a very long right-hander that opens up as you go. Slow down as you approach the corner, then gradually increase the power. This is followed by the railway street, the longest street on the track, which culminates in two successive chicanes. Keep the car as far left as you dare coming through the first chicane, but be careful you don't hit the fence. This should set you up nicely for the second slightly slower chicane. Bring the car back to the left as we now enter Tat's corner, the final corner on the track. Keep it nice and tight, don't use too much power, the car tends to oversteer through here. But that brings us back onto the main street and that is a lap around the entry circuit. Alright, so here we are in entry 4, our qualifying session, and our first lap is a 203.3, not a very fast lap, although I'm hoping to improve, and later on we come around again to post a, a 20.7, which is quite an improvement, although the track is quite wet at the moment, hopefully we can still go on and improve, and indeed we do. This is a 159.3, which brings us closer and closer to the to everyone else's qualifying times. Hopefully, we can improve even further, and we in fact do. That is a 158.5, and unfortunately, this was the fastest I could muster. I tried and I tried, but I couldn't go any faster. So, unfortunately, we're 10 seconds slower, and this is my first try at this. Uh, the first start I had to restart the um, race and as you saw there I tried to um, avoid crashing into this, those cars but it, it ju just wasn't possible that was just at the end of the first lap and here we we just saw the previous British Grand Prix winners quite a, a cool little circuit here as we now uh, take a look at the uh, well, the uh, grid. We have Moss on pole with Fangio in second, Maurice Tignan third, Eugenio Castellotti fourth, Piero Taruffi fifth, Nino Farina is sixth, Roberto Mieres seventh, uh, Jean Bera eighth, followed by Luigi Musso in ninth and Karl Kling in tenth. After them we have Mike Hawthorne in eleventh in his Ferrari, Jose Freilan Gonzalez in twelfth, Paul Freire thirteenth, fourteenth is Cesare Perdisa, Luigi Villoresi is in 15th, followed by Horace Gold in 16th, Ken McAlpine in the Connaught is 17th, Luis Hira 18th, Mike Sparkin is 19th, with Harry Shell joining Van Wall this, for this race in 20th, 21st is Roy Salvadori, 22nd Umberto Malioli, 23rd Hermano da Silva Ramos, 24th is Andre Simon, 25th Leslie Marr, Lance Macklin 26, 27th Jack Brabham, 28th Robert Manzo, 29th is Andy Hicks, 30th Alberto Uria, 31st Jack Swarters, and 32nd Tony Rolt, neither of which 
managed to post a qualifying lap for some reason. So here we are for the British Grand Prix at Aintree. Quite an exciting track as I said. I really like it. There are certain quite a few corners I really really enjoy especially the two um, chicanes at the end of the circuit. Those are really really fun to go through especially if you get them right obviously. But anyway this that was quite of a kind of a cautious start as I always do in these races because well I don't want to get myself out of the race and we already see people all over the track so well this is the standard affair at any start of a race in these uh, series I guess in this series so Anyway, we managed to move up into 21st from 29th, which is quite good. However, we lose a couple of positions coming into turn 2 here. We have we are now down in 23rd as we take a look at the start of the race. You saw me there going all the way to the right in order to stay as far away from the rest of the field as possible just to give me enough room to respond to any sort of uh stupidity the AI might think of as we now come through turn one here the fast long fast uh, right hander leading up into turn two the sort of a hairpin it's not quite a hairpin and yeah struggling for power there and a uh, spot there and here we see Sterling Moss and Juan Manuel Fangio coming around very wide through turn at the exit of turn 2 as I said you need to be very careful you can hit that wall if you go too wide here is another replay that's uh, Fangio's number 10 and here we have Carl Kling coming around and doing the exact same thing as his Mercedes uh, fellow Mercedes drivers he crashes into that wall and that's the end of his race and that is Leslie Marr who gets hit by one of the Ferraris there he's facing the opposite the wrong way tries to get back around and drives into the fence and that is his race over as well as we now take a look at Andres Simon who's coming very wide into in his uh, Maserati crashes into Harry Shell's car and here is a look at Harry Shell he comes through the this tight well long right hander he loses control and there comes Alberto Uria and uh, Andres Simon to crash into him Jack Brabham also managed to crash into this slot. I'm not entirely sure why it's so hard to keep the car on track but apparently the AI goes very wide through here and that was Alberto Oria as we now take a look at Umberto Maliori coming through the first chicane crashes into the fence there flips the car over and well he, he's upside down and that is the end of his race as well as we now start lap 2 here and we move up into 18th place we are chasing after Tony Rolt at the moment he's about 3 seconds up the road however we get very very close to everyone here Pe the AI really doesn't like these two uh, chicanes they just can't manage to navigate it as we take a look at Nino Farina in his Lancia going very wide and crashing into that Maserati that was stopped at the edge of the track there and that's the end of Farina's race and here we see Roberto Mieres that was the Maserati uh, Farina crashed into and well that's the end of that race and here we see Piero Tarufi in the fourth Mercedes uh, we see some smoke coming out, out of the back of that car well the front because the engine is mounted in the front in these cars we won't have rear mounted engines until the end of the 50s but yeah that was the end of uh, that uh, Piero Tarufi, the last uh, Mercedes that was still in the race and as we now move on to lap 3 and we have another replay of Mike Hawthorne this time in his Ferrari coming around through the chicane go uh, hits the wall hit then gets thrown into the fence he's upside down and that is the end of his race as well as we now take a look at uh, Jose Ferdinand Gonzalez in the blue yellow Ferrar uh, Ferrari he hits the wall and ends up with his car upside down and he is also out of the British Grand Prix. 
So, moving on to lap 4 now. We are up in 16th, chasing after the, the Silva Ramos. He is about 2 seconds ahead. We have Jambera behind, also 2 seconds behind. And we now see Eugenio Castellotti losing control of his Lancia, crashes into the fence there, loses his front left, and he is out of the race as Tony Rolt kind of gives him a nudge, as well as that uh, Simca. We now move on to lap 5, still chasing after the Silva Ramos, with Berra still behind us, now some 8 seconds behind, so we are pulling away from Berra and, well, Silva Ramos uh, pulling away from us, as we now take a look at Ken McAlpine who has some suspension problems uh, pulls to the side and that is the end of his race and here we see Da Silva Ramos coming through the chicane uh, hugs the um, fence there and flips the car upside down and that is the end of his race as well as we now look at Lance Macklin up ahead of us we are we've moved up into 10th we are on lap 7 now doing well pretty well Although mostly thanks to retirement as we now have a replay of Tony Rault who loses control of the car trying to uh, a lap uh, overtake me. He loses control, uh, hits Musa as well and they both crash into the fence and lose their front uh, right wheels. And that is the end of their race unfortunately as we move on to lap 7 and uh, sorry, lap uh, to start lap 8 and that was uh, Tony Rolt's car in the middle of the road. I It only uh, rendered in when it was a bit too late and I ended up crashing into it. L luckily the car There was nothing happening to the car as we now move on to lap 14 coming through turn 2 I was a bit eager on, on the power to get back on the power and lost control of the car and apparently that was a uh, invisible wall but this isn't so we can get back into the race again the car is still intact quite interestingly enough as we now have a look at Roy Salvadori who has some problems with his brakes comes through the chicane and ends up at the uh, edge of the track there at one of the Simcas kind of clips the front of the car but now we move on to lap 14 and again I get a bit Oh, uh, too eager to get back onto the power and kind of get myself stuck on this uh, er earthen embankment. Thankfully, after a bit of insistence, I managed to get back onto the track and then again got eager on the power and but eventually got going. So I'm I'm not very doing very well in this race and we now fall down to ninth place. As we now see Jack Swatters coming through the right-hander, he kind of hits my car and then tries to get back on the onto the race but drives into the world's strongest wheat field. And now on lap 18, I'm I was trying to lap lap that car. He was one lap down and he lost control, crashed into me and kind of made made me spin however we managed to still keep the car intact and still feeling pretty well considering how much how many crashes we already had as we now move on to lap 20 and i managed to move up into second place uh, overtook robert manzo and luigi villoresi chiron is leading the race at the moment now lap 21 still chasing after luis chiron he's about 30 minutes 40 seconds ahead and this is Lance Macklin going off-road for some reason he hits Tony Rolt's car a little bit then turns back into the pits and kind of stops his car for no real reason really and that is the end of that race for his race and this is Mike Sparkin losing control of his Simca as he's coming through the chicane that tries to come back but there's an invisible wall preventing him to come back onto the track and that is the end of his race. We now move on to lap 23, still chasing after Luis Chiron. He's about 10 seconds up the road at this point as we now have a look at Cesare Perdisa in his Maserati. As so many other people did, loses control of his car through the chicane, tries to come back but crashes into the fence on the other side of the road, loses his front uh, right wheel and he's out of the race 
Lap 25, still chasing after Shiran. He's about 8.5 seconds ahead. I don't think we'll be able to catch him before the end of the race. But we now have a look at Luigi Villoresi losing control of his um, uh, Lancia there. And ends up just a, just like Perdisa on the other side without any wheels. And Luigi, on lap 26, Luigi Shiran loses control of his car. And we managed to catch him. A little bit of a slide coming out of the final corner there. But we managed to keep it on the track and we move up into the lead of the British Grand Prix absolutely amazing just a handful of laps left in this race so hopefully we can keep our position as we see Jean Berra coming into the pits he's having some problems with his gearbox not sure what so but he's coming in to the pits to retire unfortunate for him as we now move on to lap 31 the last lap swoop all the way to the right to greet our team and what a fantastic victory it was a fight all the way to the end but we've managed i've it was a long time coming i think the last time we won here was in 1951 but here are the race results shiran second manzo third gold uh, fourth and paul ferrer fifth with maurice trintignan posting the fastest lap of the race and we also have the retirements of course quite a few people well uh 27 I believe, 27 retirements in this race, if my math is correct, it might not be, I'm not very good at mental arithmetics, but yeah that was the British Grand Prix at Aintree, a very fun little track, I really enjoyed racing around here, too bad it doesn't exist anymore, uh, it would be quite fun to see races around here, although I guess it, today it would only if it would be used, it would only be used for the BTCC. I don't think it would be used in Formula 1 anymore. But yeah, I had fun in this race, finally. <laughs> kind of hard to come by a fun race these days, it seems. But uh, anyway, here are the career statistics. And this was Andy's 48th Grand Prix. His best start is from first. Has three pole positions. Has set nine fastest laps. His best finishes in first. Has completed 31 races. 29 of them in the points, has won 18 Grand Prix, 3 of them at the Indianapolis 500, 1 of them at the Monaco Grand Prix, has 3 championships under his belt, has a total of 196 points, has retired 13 times, has completed 1055 out of 1350 laps, has 5 bronze trophies, 3 silver trophies, 18 gold trophies and as an extension 18 podiums. And here we have a very quick look at the championship standings. Obviously Andy wins the championship. Although there are there is one more uh, race to go. And well the second, third, fourth and fifth aren't quite settled yet. So there's still a little bit of battle to see be between Robert Manzon, Leslie Mar, Umberto Maglioli and Jacques Pollet. Well I guess we could also consider Fangio da Silva Ramos and Luis Chiron. Both all of who have six points. And everyone has scored points all the way down to 19th place and at the very bottom of the standings we see Jean Lucas who's only taken part in one race this season and I think that's the only race he'll ev ever see this season so that was the British Grand Prix had a bit of fun I I really enjoy driving around this circuit so that helped I guess had a little bit of uh, a scrap at the well through the entire race because I Especially at the beginning, I found it a bit hard to keep up with the bigger uh, teams, but eventually got there, thankfully, because, um, well, the AI is a bit dumb, especially through the those two chicanes at towards the end of the circuit. But yeah, that that is the end of uh, the British Grand Prix. That is the end of this video. Not much more to say. The ne our next race is the Italian Grand Prix at a revised uh, Monza circuit the part of the circuit we've been racing on has been revised quite significantly most of the corners are virtually unrecognizable and it's been melded together with the old uh, Monza um, oval for those of you who've, who don't know this Monza actually started off as a uh, oval back in back in the days um, that was its uh, original form and in fact a lot of uh, circuits in Europe started off as uh, ovals because well those were the easiest to build so anyway so that will be our next race the Italian Grand Prix quite an exciting circuit we'll see it quite a bit in the next in the next few uh, seasons I'm looking forward to it but yeah that is it again that is it for this video 
Don't forget to vote for next season's team, link is in the description. I'm also running a second channel where I'll, I will be playing all sorts of different games. At the moment I'm doing a Need for Speed Underground uh, let's play. If you're interested in that, uh, there is a link in the description to that as well. Other than that, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you all so much for watching. And as always, stay sharp.